This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, build your online presence with Squarespace. Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here. Happy New Year. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all had an amazing holiday. I really enjoyed mine and I really liked my time off, so thank you so much for letting me do that. In today's video, we're kicking off 2020 with an evil wizard bust. Last year, you guys really liked my bust of Krampus, and I really like making it, so I figured this would be the perfect start to 2020. Let's do another bust, but this time, let's make it an evil wizard. And then before we get started, if you enjoy my channel and you like my videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and then turn your notifications on so that you know every time I upload a new video. Now, without further ado, let's sculpt an evil wizard. All right, let's build the armature. I'm just wrapping this 12 gauge aluminum wire around this bamboo skewer that I drilled into a wooden plaque. And because this is going to be a bust, I'm just making the head. And as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. Now we're just going to bulk out the shoulders and the upper half of his torso with some aluminum foil. And then we're also going to bulk out his head. And once the armature is looking pretty good, we're going to cover the entire thing in some Sculpey Ultralight. This step is so that I create a nice base for myself to add the other clay to, so that when I'm adding the clay, I'm not adding it right on top of the aluminum foil and like reshaping the foil. It gives me a nice solid structure to work on. And because all of this will be covered with Super Sculpey later, I'm not worried about it looking perfect. But once we got it at a point that looks kind of like this, we're going to bake it. And then once it's baked, we're ready to add some Super Sculpey. I'm using Super Sculpey Original, and I just ran it through my pasta maker on the thickest setting to get these nice even sheets. The surface of the ultralight is so perfect when I'm adding the Super Sculpey to it. It just really anchors right on, and I have no sliding or anything. It's just, it's perfect. I love using ultralight. Once the entire thing is covered in clay, it's time to start mapping out the facial features. We're going to start with the eyes here. That seems like a good location. And then we're going to bring out his forehead with some more clay. Once that forehead's looking a little more defined, we're going to bring out some cheekbones here. I'm just adding some more clay like so and then just positioning it i'm not sure exactly how i want this guy to look yet so i'm just kind of making it up as i go now on to the other side Once the cheekbones, brow, and forehead are in place, it's time to give him a chin. Once the chin is on and blended, I sort of drew out where I want his mouth to go, and I'm just bringing out the mouth area a little bit, like that, so it's not completely flat and it looks like he has no teeth. We want to make it look like he has teeth. Then this is one of those experimental steps. I don't know why I thought that mouth would look good, but anyway, we're just going to jump right into the eyes here. I'm just adding this sort of bean-shaped piece of clay, and then I'm going to blend the edges in with the rest of his face. And I don't want to lose the shape of the eye, so I'm just being very gentle with my spoon tool. Then now I'm taking this other tool, I'm not sure what, the, what this one's called, and I am pressing out the open area of his eyes and simultaneously creating the eyelids. This is a super easy and super effective way to make eyes. I don't know if it's super easy, but I mean, once you do it a couple times, you'll get the hang of it. Now that side of his forehead's kind of fallen off the edge of nothing, so I'm just gonna add some more clay here, make it match the other side a little better. Mm -hmm. 
And now it's time to give him a nice exaggerated angry brow bone. Remember, this is a dark wizard, so he's gotta look angry. At least to me, he does. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. And since I got kind of carried away with the size of that exaggerated brow bone, we're just going to trim some off here and reshape it. And his cheeks are looking a little too sunken for my liking, so we're just going to bring those out a little bit more. At this point, he kind of looks like he's had a bad facelift, so we're just going to give him some droopy eyelids to prove all the critics wrong. Once those droopy eyelids are on, we're just going to add a couple more details. Some little flaps of skin kind of pulling from his raised angry brow bone. Alright, I can finally see where this thing is going. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Now we're going to give him a nose. Of course, just sort of shape this out in my fingertips and we're going to attach it using my fingers and spoon tool. Being very careful not to ruin all the work we did on his eyes. And now we're going to add some nostrils. For the next step, we're going to continue detailing his eyes by adding some very large bags underneath them. We're going to make him look like he hasn't slept in years. Kind of like me. Alright, once those bags are on, we're going to go ahead and add his real mouth. At some point earlier, I removed the other one for obvious reasons. Now let's give him an upper lip, very tiny upper lip. Then we're going to add some very large wrinkles on the sides of his mouth and then some jowls. This is just a snake of clay and I'm blending one edge in with the other side and then sort of retaining the shape of the other side by blending it with my spoon tool. Now let's keep going with those wrinkles. Now I'm going to carve out some frown lines and then add some snakes of clay to create some forehead wrinkles. Now I'm going to take my tiny ball stylus to create some pores at the tip of his nose and in some other areas. And I just want to enhance those droopy eyelids a little bit more, so we're just going to add some more clay and bring those out. And then refine some things with the ball stylus and then get back to that pore texture. Now we're going to create some veins in his temples. Again, these are snakes of clay that I'm blending in with the rest of his head. Super easy and super effective. I love doing this even if I'm not going to see them once I attach his hair. I like that they're there. 
Now I'm just using my Explorer tool to create some skin texture wrinkles on his lips. And then I'm also using a cone shaped color shaper. Then once the texture on his face is at a pretty good point, I'm just gonna start his ears. And I'm just shaping out the ear in my hands right here and then attaching it, pressing it on and blending it in. We're just gonna shape it out with a large ball stylus and medium ball stylus. After completing the second ear off camera and adding some more pores to his face, I'm just bringing out his neck with some more clay and then creating these wrinkles in the front. Again, snakes of clay, blending those in, and then I'm going to detail them with my Explorer tool and color shaper, just like I did with his face. Then for the last step, we're gonna finish off this guy with some clothes. I'm just adding a little collar. This was a snake of clay that I ran vertically through my pasta maker and just added it to his neck and blended the bottom edge in with the rest of him. Now I'm adding a snake of clay to create some more folds and wrinkles on his shirt or robes. Just gonna keep it simple and give him some nice generic looking robes. And there we go. For the final touch, I'm just rolling the textured edge of a sculpting tool on the surface of his clothes and then brushing the entire surface with clay softener to remove fingerprints. And he's ready for his final bake. Then once he's baked and completely cooled down, he's ready for paint. I'm gonna start the painting process by covering all of the skin areas with a nice brown wash. And a wash is just mixing paint with water. And all of the paints that I use in this video are folk art brand matte acrylics. Now I'm going into all of the recessed areas, like the areas around his eyes, with some darker brown wash. Like that. And then on the sides of his nose, a little bit. Just give his face some more dimension and bring out those details. Then I'm taking some imperial red mixed with brown and black and adding it to different areas around his eyes just to get some blood flowing through them. And I'm also going to add some of this red wash to the tip of his nose. Then with a darker red wash, I'm just going to dab my paintbrush over the surface of his skin like so to create this sort of texture, I guess. And um, we're just going over all of it to just make him look more lifelike. And I'm also going to do that to his ears. Then continuing his eyes, I added a little bit of true blue to my dark brown wash and we're just going into certain areas with that. Some of the wrinkles here and there under his nose. And then I'm gonna take some fresh fern and paint the veins on the side of his head. Then I'm going in with a very fine paintbrush and adding some of that blue. And I did it mix it with a little bit of red so it's kind of purple looking and I'm just going into some of the crevices around his eyes with that. And I'm also using this to create some sort of like veiny blood vessels under his eyes as well, just to add some more detail. All right, so far so good. For the next step, I'm just gonna dry brush some lighter beige over the surface of his face just to bring out some highlights. And then I'm going to flick some watered down dark brown onto his face to create this sort of speckled effect age spots or something, I don't know. And then we're painting his eyes. To create this color, I used yellow bright, warm white, and a very, very little bit of imperial red. 
Now I'm just adding some veins and a little bit of a red wash into the corners of his eyes with a very fine brush. And now it's time to paint the irises. I decided to give him bright green eyes. I don't really like this decision. I'm not sure why I chose bright green, but it is what it is at this point. Maybe I'll paint them later. To brighten the eyes, I'm just adding some yellow bright to the center and sort of creating a gradient like that. And then finishing them off with a pupil. And then here is my live reaction after finishing his eyes. <laughs> what the hell is this supposed to be? <laughs> oh my god. Whatever. Okay, so now he's got his eyes just like looking right into your soul. Oh man. Alright. I don't know why I just thought his eyes look hilarious and I still kind of think they do, but I'm over right now. After painting his robes and the base black, it's time to add his hair. I will be using synthetic wool. I've got some black and some gray here. And I cut it pretty long because I don't know how long I want his hair to be yet. So we're just going to play it safe and I'll be attaching it using Fabri-Tac. To attach it, I'm just starting at the back of his head here. Adding a line of glue and then adding the hair in sections. This was a very messy process and it was 20 times harder than it was when I did it on Krampus. But that's okay. It works out and it looks fine in the end. But getting there was kind of a struggle. I just can't help but think he looks so sad and hopeless laying on his face like that. Totally out of character. And his beard is, in my opinion, what saves him. He goes from looking like a retired rock and roll star to a wizard. <laughs> so I'm just attaching the black part of his beard now. And then I go on top of this with some of that gray. And the gray is what kind of sells it for me. It looks so much better with the gray than just all black. So I'm glad I did that. And then, you know, lighter colors look better on hairlines because they sort of disappear at the tips in with the skin because they're lighter and it looks like it's growing out of his head a little bit better. So, and because of that, I decided to finish off his hairline with some gray as well. And then we're gonna give him his little mustache. And then this kind of makes me wish I would have just done all of his hair gray and then maybe added a couple like white streaks to it because I really don't get the two-tone thing, but whatever. Too late now. Now we're just adding his eyebrows gonna do gray eyebrows for those and then trim some excess off and then I'm going to glaze his eyes um, seal his skin and I guess style his hair off camera and he's done the dark wizard is complete let me know what you think of him in the comments and then if you use any of the tips and techniques in this video on your own projects, share them to Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Tag me at Ace of Clay or hashtag Ace of Clay so I can check them out. And that's a wrap. I really hope you like our evil wizard. I am so happy with how this thing turned out and I think I enjoyed making him more than when I made Krampus. 
and this will definitely not be my last bust. I actually want to make some larger ones in the future that'll take a little bit more time, but I'm really excited to share that with you as well. So let me know what you think of this guy in the comments, and then of course be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And then before we close out, I just want to talk a little bit about our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you're just getting started or you're an established brand, the Squarespace commerce platform supports the way you do business. Whether you want to sell products directly or even bill for your services, they've got you covered. For me personally, I love Squarespace for their portfolios. I am constantly updating my website with more photos of my work, and I love how customizable the galleries are. And I also want to mention their amazing email support team that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're an actual team in an office that will typically respond to your questions within an hour. So with all that said, start the new year off right with a brand new website and head on over to squarespace.com, start your free trial, and then when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash aceofclay to get 10% off your first purchase. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. If you want more content from me, be sure to check out my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Join my Facebook group, Aces of Clay. I'm even on TikTok now, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.